Jack it up. What's up Thrivers, Ascended1 here. I hope all of you guys are having a wonderful day. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button because we're having a lot of fun over here. We're becoming better ARC players every single day. Big shout out to Joey and Riley from the Notification Army. Thank you so much guys for all of your love and support. That's what's up. So right here guys, we got all of our cementing paste from our wolf. I think we got like 15 or 17,000 pace from our, uh, from our snails. If you want to see how we took care of our snail pace operation, ch ch check out the video in the d description. So right here, it, it is on our way to the resource mountain. This is the place on center map where you are, are going to be taking care of obsidian, crystal, and the ingots. This is a three for one deal. By the time you guys are done and set up you are gonna have so much resources you are gonna be able to buy and trade for whatever you want you guys know me I'm the dragon guy I raise a lot of dragons I used to trade people dragons for a lot of polymer and I always wondered how they got so much polymer but now I found out and I want now I want to show you guys, so we're going to fly over to Skull Island. Now, right here, I love this game so much. The view is awesome. We got the flaming eyes, the mouth, the teeth. This is badass. Skull Island definitely has it going on. Now, now I've had people tell me in the past that, uh, that uh, there is not a lot of resources on this mountain, but take a look at this. This is the gingivitis that we want to have. We got crystals, obsidian, ingots. This is... I mean, if this isn't a lot of resources, I do not know what is. Coming from Scorched, Obsidian is so hard to find, and, and to come here and see so many black n -n nodes, all I can say is one, two, three, jackpot, and we got a setup shop. And look at up top here, guys. Look at all this crystal, all the nodes, of the all the Obsidian, the ingots. This is definitely where we are setting up shop, but we are actually located very far away across map, so... So instead of bringing the resources to us, we got to bring ourselves to the resources. But luckily, I got Mila D, aka the architect, aka getting the job done, aka finding the answer. And right here, we got big, big nugget mine up at Porcupine Creek. This is the place where we are going to be doing all of our business here. So right here, we are we are going to be using the same technique as we did on, on our floating pen back east. You can actually float this whole base on one pillar, but you know Chris, he likes to dazzle it up, put some trophies there. It looked kind of awkward on one pillar. It looked kind of like, you know, one little tick and it was all going to come crumbling down. So we got a few extra ones there, and uh, while Chris was uh, setting up the base, he noticed a megalodon in the water, so Chris loves his uh, white sharks. His name's White Shark, I mean, it makes sense, so he actually tamed it, and he's got a little water pen down here so this is how you make the floating base as long as you have ceilings pillars and foundations somewhere on the floor you can build above it it doesn't have to be clean it just has to be there and then you can build the floor up top nice and clean bickety blam but that's enough about how we built it why don't we go go upstairs and take a look and really see what's going on here so right here, we got our dragon out front. As soon as you walk inside, you will notice that we have a rafter up top to park the Quetzal, our way dragon. It's a pretty big space now. Uh, you definitely don't have to build it this big, but uh, we got the architect on, on our team, and, and, and he likes to do it right. So right here, we got a little a glass floor, very spacious, some trophies. But, but the most important part, Notice all the vaults guys. We are storing all of our resources here. Skull Island has a ton of stuff. Here is our polymer factory. Polymer factory. We got four fabricators. So you can make 
4,000 polymer at once as soon as you, as soon as you get there you fire them up and as soon as you leave you fire them up again so that's 8,000 polymer every trip you get here and I, I gotta transfer all that cementing paste that we got from the wolf because it's two cementing paste and two obsidian to make one polymer that seems like a lot but but the way that we are gathering cementing paste and obsidian it's really no problems so right here we have some some obsidian from a previous trip we got some of uh, some of the ingot some of the ingots a lot more obsidian I mean the resources are absolutely crazy here especially if you mine on a, on a, freaking, a triple a weekend it's absolutely nuts there's some crystal and, and and guys we have only been here a couple of times we just set up shop a week or two ago it's not it's not that old at all and this is my favorite part about the whole thing we got the industrial forge with a few ingots but what you do is you park your quets or dragon on top of the roof and you can access the vault from the ceiling this is fantastic for when you're making the making the quick trips as, as well as it makes everything accessible from the basement when you are making guns or doing trades it is all very accessible so right here let's go mining let's farm let's farm this whole place out so all we need is a weight dragon a weight quest and an anki you can do it with two quests you can do it with whatever you got just get your mining equipment to the top of that mountain with something that can carry some weight because this is a lot of resources so um this definitely works best with a two-man operation but uh i have done it myself it's actually not not that bad at all it can be done no biggie so right here chris is on top of the Anki and I'm and, and I'm going to be following him in the weight dragon and as soon as he gets encumbered he does a drop all I drop the stone because well we don't really need the stone and then I'm gonna throw all the resources on the weight dragon and I'm just gonna keep following him until I am super encumbered and then I'm just gonna make the quick trip back down to porcupine Creek easily drop off all the resources and, and I'm gonna come back up and we'll and we will do this until the whole place is farmed so when I am away and there is nobody to pick up the resources he still has the weight quest it's absolutely perfect so right here even if you are encumbered and, and flying really slow it really doesn't matter it's so close and this is the best part because I see people on top of Skull Island all the time in one RG or bringing like one Quetzal and they only mine the top and, and they've left the whole bottom there this place is ready to go if you are all set up why not do the entire thing we can do this whole mound in 30 minutes and here we are right here just making the quick drop off we got the forge going here I'm just gonna grab all, all the materials off the dragon look down and put it into the vault and uh, this may not seem like a huge deal but if you farm and you make a lot of trades and you want to stack up those resources, you you have to save all the time you possibly can because these are why things are so expensive to buy. But if but if you can do the setup, have the base, have the quets, it can really make things a lot easier. And you are gonna reaping all of the rewards so this wouldn't be a grind time video if we didn't show some of the grind so right here guys you know what it is all you farmers out there it's just about putting in your time and I mean it's just half an hour I spend a half an hour feeding dinos half an hour just talking to my friends all the time so why not do it and get a ton of resources if you do this on a times three it is absolutely absurd um so right here he's just gonna keep going I'm gonna keep following drop the stone pick up the resources put it on the dragon and keep going rinse and repeat so now that I've made a few trips on the dragon Chris has the Quetzal completely full so I'll just make a quick trip down down to Porcupine Creek now now uh, I see people even come even come to Skull Island with three or four Quetzals and uh, I gotta say that has to take a long time it's not that bad at all I mean definitely worth the trip for sure but this has to be a lot faster and just having so many Quetzals follow you around and all this and all that it definitely can be done but uh 
you definitely want to keep things as simple as possible. I like to be relaxed while I play. And uh, right here, I love this quetzal. I love this island. I love this game. Things are looking up right here. So right here, Chris is going to meet me on the bottom floor and it's time to switch things up so there is our Anki stats at 860 melee with like 800 weight and uh, these are one of the god Anki eggs we actually have some 400 plus Anki's popping out back at the base and this thing is getting like what was it like 30 crystal per swipe 70 70 obsidian per swipe and 150 metal per swipe and I mean that is not even on triple it, it if that was on triple, it adds up so fast, or 1.5, it's absolutely cra crazy. It, it is trips back and forth all day, filling vaults, no problem. All right, so now that the entire mountain's been, been cleared, let's take a look at the loot. So we got around, well, 3,000 plus ingots. If that was a 1.5 times, that would be close to 5,000 ingots in 30 minutes. That's not bad for sure, especially when you consider you are getting so many other resources as well. Um, so we will just throw a little bit of gas in here before we leave, melt the rest of the ingots, and as soon as we come back, definitely good to go. So why don't we take a look down downstairs and see what we got in the way of crystal and obsidian. Let's get down to the vault that we were transferring to. So right here, it looks like we have uh, 24 slots of crystal. So that's uh, 2,400 crystal on times three. That could be like 4,000 plus. We did leave a few nodes on the mountain. So it, so it actually may be closer to 5,000. I think we have about 90 slots of obsidian there. So that's 4,500 obsidian on the 1.5 times. That could be closer to 7,000 or 7,500. If you melt that down, divide it in half, that's like 3,500 polymer. I don't know. I'm not a mathematician. All I know is that that is a ton of resources and that has to be one of the best ways to, to, to go about getting crystal, polymer, and ingots at the same time. So really guys, it's all about the setup and preparation. As long as you have the, the good dinos, the resources, and, and, and just, the idea and mental fortitude to really set yourself up with the right way so we got all of our fabricators here you can make 1000 polymer out of each fabricator at a time so as soon as we we get there it's 4000 polymer as soon as we leave yeah chris woohoo pump up polymer factory in line here <laughs> so right here we have a full vault of polymer so you guys can see it's no bull um, and we've only been here a couple times I don't even know what I'm gonna spend all this polymer on all I know is is that when I do need the polymer we're gonna have it and uh, so this is once again the overview of the base I hope you guys really uh, enjoyed this vi vi video I know that a lot of you guys al already knew a uh, knew about skull mountain but I but I wanted to to show you the base that we had on the side the combination so now it's back to the base time to get ready for the for the breeding event we just found out that they are not patching floating for another week woo, woo! super awesome so as soon as we get back i'm going to grab another 600 cementing paste from the snails keep the factory up i feel the wheels in motion guys i'm feeling momentum i feel like the wheels are turning, the gears are clicking correctly, we're running like a Swiss watch over here, and I just can't thank you guys enough for all the love and the support. I'll see you guys soon, and as always, don't survive, but thrive!